What is up, outdoor people? James, give them a wave. Wave. Guess what today is? Can you guess what? I'm excited. Today is harvest day. Harvest day. You know what that means? Dun, 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 dun. Meat chickens are going to the freezer today. Uh, at least half of them are. They are about three months old and they're ready to harvest. So, 12 weeks old, big enough, plenty big enough to eat. So, by the way, I'm David here at Southern Outdoors. That is James. I will show you a list of products and stuff you need to do this and to do it efficiently. First, you need some meat chickens, whatever that may look like for you. These are Cornish crosses. I keep them pinned up, keep the feed poured to them. And how do little chickens get in there? Whatever. They're not getting in. Those are young buff Orpingtons, pullets. Anyway, these are meat chickens. I got about 25 here. A uh, couple things you need. I will, I'm not gonna show you how to make them today, but I'll show you what I have. These are killing cones. That's a turkey killing cone, two chicken killing cone, two banny killing cone. Nice, sharp knife. Um, a couple buckets, more than a couple buckets. I don't know how to say this politely, but you put the chicken, you pick the chicken up, you pull its head out the bottom, you slice the vein in its neck, the jugular, and it will bleed out. It'll make your chickens taste better. It's pretty harmless, pretty... No chickens running around the yard with their head cut off. The buckets catch the blood. Eventually you'll clean those buckets when you're all done. We're gonna harvest about 12 or so today out of 25. Um, James, out of there, what are you doing? So that's the starting place. I will get back with you in a minute. Man, it's windy. Get back with you in a minute and show you the rest of the stuff you need. So without going into too much detail, the killing cones have the chickens in them at our barn, dripping the blood out. They're, they're dead, okay? So nobody needs to worry about that. But I'm not gonna show you that on video because it's pretty gruesome. Just that much blood coming out. Pretty self-explanatory. You put them in the cone, pull their head out the bottom, slice their jugular, they bleed out in seconds. Uneventful, no chickens running around with their heads cut off. Now, I have a yard bird chicken plucker here. I will show you how that works in a little bit. That's a necessity. I have a turkey fryer, that's what I use to do my chickens. I have a couple coolers of ice. So now, and I'll have another five gallon bucket here in a second. So what I'll do, I'll turn this on, get my water boiling, fill it up to the line, get my water boiling or rough, not boiling, roughly 142 degrees. I'll take her give somewhere. I have it off the fire because I had a little hot, but once that happens, you dunk your chicken in the water. I'll show you that process. Then you'll take it from the hot water after 15, 30, 45 seconds. You'll know as the feathers start falling off. You'll take that. Then you'll immediately dunk it in an ice, wa ice water bath to keep the meat from cooking. The idea is not for meat to cook. The idea is for the feathers to let loose. Once the feathers let loose, I'll then put it in the plucker. I'll turn the plucker on. Actually, I'll do two in a row, then throw them in the plucker. Once I throw them in the plucker, plucker, I can do up to three at a time in there, but I'll throw them in there, run them through. They're, they'll be featherless. Then I'll move them immediately to a cooler full of ice. Over here, once I'm done with doing a dozen, putting them in the cooler or two coolers, then I will, at that point, start dressing them once I'm done. Anyway, you'll get the picture in a minute. So for all intensive purposes, not gonna show you their head, hopefully. So just so y'all know, I got a couple of them dead. I'm gonna go harvest a couple more. In the meantime, I'm just gonna start the dunking process. I'll show y'all what that looks like. Set this one out here. All right. It's almost 145 degrees. Good pair of tongs. Start dunking them like this. 
By the way, every few chickens, I have to change this water. Back up, Dane. Why? Hot water. You see me just working them. I'm picking the chicken up, just working it in and out of there. Yes, it's gross. It's part of it. I don't typically eat chickens for a day or two after I do this. <laughs> So anywhere, 30 seconds roughly. Back up, James. All I'm right. gonna test wings. So they're not they're not pulling yet, a little resistance. So uh-uh. Wow. Yucky. And I wouldn't typically do this in my carport, but we have thunderstorms on the way. Swish it around. Alright, let's try one. They're coming. They're starting to. I may have cooled the water off too much. If you need gloves, sensitive hands, I suggest you wear gloves. This is 150 degree water. Roughly, 145. This may be the wrong thermometer. I have two. This one may be off a few degrees. They're starting to. The ones you want to try are the wing feathers. The wings are usually the hardest. Well, this may end up taking a minute, but I don't want to do it any longer than that. All right, good enough. These wing feathers pulled right out, no problem. I take it right to the bucket of ice water. Different kind of ice water pan. <laughs> cool that bird down, quick as we can. All right, that bird's gonna cool. I'm gonna go get the other bird do the same thing. I'm not going to bore y'all with the second one real quick. I will catch you in a second and show you the next step in the process. All right, y'all. So turn on your water spigot. Have your water hose hooked up to the yard bird chicken plugger. Have the water going in it. I have water in here, ice water in here with a chicken in it. Once that one's cool, should be fairly quick. We're gonna turn this on. Well, that didn't take long. It's like they know. I also have a compost pile with fish guts in it. I don't know, they could be smelling that. But immediately, I kill something, blood is shed, and buzzards show up. So our water is at 140. I, of course, you see it's clean water now. I changed the water out after the first two chickens. Apparently, they were pretty dirty. Um, the water's at a, about 140, Then it gets to about 145 or so, roughly, 148, somewhere between 140, 150. I will start dunking chickens. I already have four that are harvested and bled out. Um, two of them in the killing cones over there at the barn. Two of them on the other side of this wall, ready to go in the water. Still have my ice water, and we'll show you a few more here in a second. Got me a chicken. We're at about 145, 150 degrees. Wanna drop it in there? Yes, chickens are dirty. Anybody who's had meat chickens, they literally sit down and eat. So they're always going to be dirty. Nasty. But, this hot water not only cleans them, it scalds them. It's really called scalding chicken. It gets these chicken's feathers to loosen up. When the feathers loosen up, that makes the fucker's job a whole lot easier. Like I said, I kind of up and down, pick them up, push them down to get that water worked into these feathers. Like I said, chickens are nasty. Most of y'all don't 
don't have a clue how nasty they are. If I was to eat chicken feet, I would have to make sure the feet I am holding go completely under because the skin will peel off and it'll be clean chicken feet. I don't eat chicken feet, some people do. They're great for stock. broth. Great for broth, great for stock. I'm not, today I'm not gonna show you how to dress a chicken, on this video anyway, but also I'm not gonna show you how to break it down, I guess I should say as well. Some of these will be processed as whole chickens. Some of these will be broken down. The bigger ones will be broken down. This water's hot if anybody's wondering. We test the wing. It pulled off. Oh, that was nice. This one's perfect. I remember to dunk it right into the ice water. Work it into the crevices. Because if you don't get it cooled down, the skin will start cooking. Mm -hmm. And then it won't be as pretty as the bird when you get them completely plucked. We changed this water. We did two. Changed the water. Doing two again. That was hot. Slightly warm. That one's a dirty chicken. I'm probably gonna... Mm. The water is hot. <laughs> my tongue. Something happened to my tongue. No wonder I can't grab them. This is a big chicken here. It is a big old chicken. I put him in the rooster cone. I mean, in the turkey cone. Yes. Some of these are so. They're only three months old. I did not go long this year. Last year I waited a little too long. This year I went three months, which is twelve weeks. Well, I think I had a surgery or something, didn't I? Last year, yeah. yeah. We had a lot going on in the last. Several years. years. <laughs> and now we're pregnant again this year, so we like to be busy again. <laughs> we don't like extra responsibilities and we don't like to relax. If anybody's wondering. <laughs> Homesteading sounds cool. It's a lot of work. And it is cool. It's a blessing. It is. I know where all of my food comes from. That we process ourselves or that I hunt and kill. It's something kind of rewarding about that. Alright. Not ready. Wing feathers are ready, but the tail feathers aren't quite. A little longer. I'm not gonna get it. Let it go too long. That's good enough. On the one. Off the other. Ice water. Get it icing down. Drop this one in the plucker for the meantime, and then we're gonna turn the water on. We will catch y'all in just a second, and you'll see it all over. So we got the water on first, and we turn on the plucker. I'm gonna do one at a time this time, so y'all can see it. Like that. Putting it in the cooler. Come over here. Actually, we got a couple in the cooler. I'm gonna bury this one in the ice too. As soon as I get this other one in here, I'll pour ice on top. Lots of ice involved. Turn it on, water still on.
look like, Mama? Looking good. Actually, this one's a heat. heat. Nice, clean, clean chicken to put in the freezer. Nice. Organic. I think Yay. I just. James, can you go shut the water off, please? There's the feathers coming out of the bottom. It's important when you're done with everything. Thoroughly sterilize your coolers, your pans, your buckets. You don't want to get anybody sick from anything and you definitely don't want to use something that's dirty to harvest. It's a dirty process, but you want to stay clean as best as you can. Hundred and fifty degrees. This is a smaller chicken. I need a leg with a knee. Thank you. Dirty process, y'all. Mm. Dirt, sand. You don't want to hear it. It's got a little poop. <laughs> I assure you this happens at the big timers, too. You just Probably worse. It may be worse. But this is scalding water, so it kills whatever germs are in here. And it cleans them. They get a good rinse in the, in the plucker with fresh well water. Water hot. This chicken's a smaller one. I went ahead and chose to harvest this, even though normally I wouldn't. But this one's smaller because these Cornish crosses, they have some defects sometimes. And I think this one's leg was messed up. So it didn't walk around as much as the others and it, it didn't get around good. It basically crawled to the feeder and water. I hate to say crawled. It, it, it could get up when it needed to, but just couldn't make it around like the rest of them. So it didn't eat near as much. Those things are like velociraptors when you put feed in there. They will attack you, not really, but they will push you out of the way to get to the there's that wings are good ice water cool it down quickly we need to add some ice and water in there but i'll do that in a minute next chicken next chicken goes in here that's a monster chicken <laughs> Also, it's important to note, I pulled the feed like 30, well, really like 24, 30 hours ago, somewhere around there. So these things wouldn't have any, uh, any food in their stomachs, their crawls would be empty, everything would be empty. Cause that makes for even a dirtier process. You want at all costs or all possibilities to pull the feed, let their systems empty out. A little tip I've learned. This is our third year processing chicken. Second year, totally dependent on our own chicken flock. Watch that left leg there, honey. You, your leg. I just didn't want you to trip. After this chicken, I'm gonna pour the water out and start over again. Probably harvest, uh oh, harvest four more. I don't know if that's six or eight. I think that'll be eight. eight. Back up, James. It's hot. It's important, y'all, to have your kids out here. They need to know where their feed comes from. That one's good. Pull this one out of the ice water, put that one in the ice water. James, can you go turn the water on? Yeah. I'm gonna set that one in there, turn the water on it, fresh water's gonna run over it. Turn it off! Let them help, let them learn. Push! Push! You turn it, do it! There you go. Keep going! One more! One more! 
There you go. You got it, Bubba. Fresh well water running over that one while this one's too. Shortly. Turn this off. Turn this off. Dump the water. Do not dump this hot water in your yard. It will leave a burnt spot. If you got a spot in your driveway that you need to grass kill, do it there. Hot water. All right, everybody. We are finished harvesting for the day. We ended up harvesting 10 chickens. I have now got them all harvested, plucked, and dressed. I didn't show you the dressing process. I don't want to put that in this video. That may be a later video. Um, sorry I'm squinting. The sun came out amongst the clouds. It's kind of raining. The rain held off long enough for us to finish uh, today, but I think I have 13 more this weekend I'll harvest again. We'll have plenty of chicken for a while before I put some more back in the uh, chicken pen to raise some more up for eaters. My goal would be to have about 35 total this year. That'll get us about one chicken meal a week. So a couple things to tell you about uh, or show you. Turn flies. There's the chickens right there. They're on ice and they're clean. I will go inside. Some of them will stay whole. Some of the bigger ones, I'll spatchcock and put half, actually just cut in half. I'll put half chicken or whatever. And then I'll have others. I will completely break down wings and drums and that sort of thing. That way when we do hot wings and stuff. Uh, what else? it for today i guess um i showed you all the equipment i use um pretty self-explanatory like i said you got to see it all here it's what we do hey i can see right here rain held off as always want to thank you for watching if you would give us a big thumbs up on youtube if you like what you're seeing um if you would comment let me know if you think it's gross it is pretty gross just my opinion but it's part of life somebody has to do it at least i know where my meat's coming from how it's being processed being ethical um anyway it's a soapbox i don't really want to get into but thanks again for watching if you're watching on facebook if you'll share us and uh, give us a thumbs up there comment let us know what you might want to see us harvest next i know i have in the next couple months some rabbits coming up uh, we're in spring summertime pattern so outside of rabbits i'm not sure what else we got going on besides different types of fish so anyway we'll catch you on the next video as always take care god bless